would like to take a few minutes in this video to talk about the importance of metadata and metadata standards. I've mentioned metadata briefly in other videos, but to recap, metadata is data about data. Metadata describes what a particular data set is, who created it, at what scale it was created, at what scale it's appropriate for analysis, uh, how it was created, uh, the lineage of the data, meaning whether or not the particular data set had been created or derived from other data sets, which may themselves may have been created or derived from still other data, set, uh, data sets, uh, what the accuracy level can be expected for the data set, uh, what all of the fields in the attribute table actually mean, what person or what organization is responsible for the data set, when the data set was last updated, and when you might expect for it to be updated again. Metadata can also contain much more information than just what I've listed here. But what you should be able to tell from this list is that it's incredibly important for you to know all of this information about a data set uh, whenever you're working on a project, especially if you're working on a scientific project. Many people don't realize how important the data uh, metadata is until they need to know something about a particular data set that they've downloaded from the internet and realize there's no metadata to be found whatsoever. Then you realize how important it is and you may not be able to use a data set because you don't have information about it that you need. So you should get into the habit of creating comprehensive metadata for the data sets that you create so that other people will have this information when they use your data. Unfortunately, because creating and entering metadata takes time, people often neglect to create metadata. And this severely in the medium to long term, and often really in the very short term, inhibits the reusability of the data and uh, d prevents you from having any integrity for, with the data. The, the data must be documented in order to have integrity for other projects. And if it's not documented, uh, then the data just doesn't have integrity. And when you don't have this documentation, you don't have the metadata, this results in a huge wasting of time and resources. It, it's very easy to forget all of the particulars about a data set, uh, even that you yourself created, even a couple of weeks and sometimes a couple of days later. I'm, I know that I will forget all kinds of things about the data set that I create. And if you write them down, if you document them, then you don't have to remember them because they're there, they're documented in the metadata, you can always access them, look them up, and then also everyone else can as well. So if you think that you're saving time by not properly documenting your data, not properly creating metadata, you're really not. You're going to end up wasting a huge amount of time and resources while you try to remember uh, what you created, what conditions you created it under, uh, and then that data just isn't going to be able to be reused and you're going to have to recreate whole data sets. So please, from the very beginning of your project, get into the habit of documenting your data. It's, it is a habit that will pay off a hundredfold or more in the, in the medium to long term and sometimes, as I said, even the short term. There are established standards for GIS metadata that different organizations use, and so it's often a job requirement to produce metadata for every data set created for a project that adheres to the metadata standards that your organization uses. There are also national standards that we could get into, but I think are probably best left for a dedicated lesson. However, the conflict inherent in metadata always seems to be that although everybody wants extensive metadata, extensive well-documented data sets, no one wants to spend time to create it. That's the problem. It takes time. And the more robust and comprehensive the metadata standards are, uh, that you're having to adhere to, the less likely, or at least that are available to you, the less likely that people are to actually produce that metadata. So you come up with this great and robust uh, metadata standard and apply it to your organization, and then everybody looks at all of this metadata stuff that they need to fill out, all these forms, and then it doesn't seem to get done. And so conversely, it, it seems like the more relaxed the metadata standard is, the more willing people seem to be to provide information because it's less structured. 
uh, and less robust. So we have a paradox here. Paradoxically, it sometimes seems that the looser metadata standards are, it may actually encourage people to provide more information about a data set because they can just go in and create or, uh, uh, or write in what they want to say very easily. Whereas if you have very, very strict metadata standards, they may not even go in and create it even though they should. So we have those two conflicting, uh, uh, we, we have that conflict within metadata. Uh, as we already mentioned with regard to the anatomy of the shapefile, the shapefile format uses XML data standard, the XML data standard, to record all of the information, uh, all of the metadata about a shapefile. And with a recent uh, version of ArcGIS, people were actually surprised to find that the metadata format that the art catalog, for instance, will have you uh, adhere to is much looser than it had been in the past. And I think this was version 10 where this changed. I could be wrong about that, but I remember this change happening. So uh, I think it was uh, this uh, version 10. If you want to use the more robust metadata standards uh, that uh, are, were in place from the national government, the federal government here in the United States, you needed a special plug-in in order to get that template, in order to get that form. Whereas previously it had been available as a, a default, I believe even, for all um, shapefiles that are created. But it seems to have been a, a deliberate decision with regard uh, to the metadata to encourage the creation of metadata by not uh, having the metadata forms be intimidating to people and having this very extensive and robust federal uh, metadata standard there. Maybe, I don't know if it's worked or not, uh, maybe there's some kind of study out there, maybe if you see something lighter weight, you do end up with more metadata, even though it wouldn't be as structured and maybe not adhere to different standards. I don't know. That's, that's the thing we have to think about. But in any case, it's your responsibility as a GIS analyst to understand any metadata standards that are in place in your organization or agency and adhere to them every single time a data set is created. And if you are doing your own project, then you need to go ahead and begin with the habit of creating metadata every time you create a data set. Uh, list out uh, that you created it, when you created it, uh, what methods you used to create it, all of that information. Go ahead and put that into the metadata. If you're using ArcGIS, you can do that in Arc Catalog on the metadata tab for all of the different uh, feature classes or shape files. Go ahead and enter that information in there, and that way you don't have to think about it again, and you know that it's there for your use and other people's use. In the end, that's really going to be an important part of your GIS data creation and your GIS data management. <laughs>